Whew, you tuned to the right channel, you did. This week we have a great episode for you. It is an old classic shepherd pie, also known as cottage pie. Got all the tips, the tricks, everything you need to know. But the thing that kicks it over the top rail of the fence, what is it? Parmesan creamy cheesy potatoes right there on top. Mm -mm, good, come on, let's do it. Thanks for joining us in camp today. My name is Kent Rollins and we do a whole lot of that cowboy cooking here the right way, the old fashioned way, and even the newfangled way. It is a little cloudy, drizzly, sort of chilly, dampish kind of day, so this recipe is gonna fit to a T. It is a shepherd's pie, or also known as a cottage pie. A shepherd pie is traditionally made out of ground lamb. Now, cottage pie, I love to use beef. It's a recipe that will warm you up on these kind of days. It's very hearty, old-fashioned traditional classic deal from whoo, way across the pond so many years ago and it's been moderate modernized and brought over here into the states and people fix it with sausage now i've seen people do it with chorizo they make it spanish style so however you want to do it and add to this we're going to let you the printable recipe and everything you might need will be in the little description down there below and any link that shan might have for you grab a hold because it's a good one so join me over here at the fire and let's brown up some beef well, folks, we're gonna break out our 10 inch field skillet today, set it right over there on a hot spot. We ain't just gonna throw some cold meat in that skillet. We're gonna go ahead and let it warm up a little first. Then we're gonna put it in there. One pound of ground beef. Get you something that's pretty lean because one thing you can't have is a greasy shepherd pie. So you wanna make sure it's a pretty lean ground beef, like a maybe a 90, 10, something like that. Season to your suiting. As you see there, whatever you like, but if I was you, I'd season with this, it will make it better. And you see me using this old mesquite spatula that I made here. A lot of folks ask where you get this, where can you buy them? I made a batch of these way back last September, October. They went like hotcakes. Been busy we have, but I am going to get to making some more of these in the not too distant future. So if you'd be interested in that, be sure and sign up for our emails because Shan will have that on there when these become available. This meat did make some grease. Now we're gonna cook that out of it, but if you have a lot that's in there, just drain that grease out of there and then cook it some more to where you make sure that this is pretty dry because folks, we need this to sort of set up as it cooks when we get everything put together where it's a little stiffer. We finna be coming at you, Shan, live and in color. This is browned up really good. We have cooked the moisture out of it and that's sort of what I'm after. Excuse me, folks, let me wipe this off. It has been raining a little. Lord knows we need a whole bunch. My daddy used to tell me it's always been drier than it's been wetter when Noah come by. But he really didn't come by here in the big flood because we just got a half inch. That's how bad the drought was. Two carrots. Two stalk of celery. One onion, white or yellow. Your preference is good with me. The thing that makes a shepherd pie is, I really think, how it all binds together. And I found out that it really works better for me if you sort of grate now, it in there. I left that root on there for a reason. It's a knob, know what I mean? Because when you get to go getting that close to it, you know what else you'll be putting in there? Your knuckles. Yeah, knuckles for sure. So be careful there. Does Big like carrots? I don't, Big, you like a carrot? Hey, you like a carrot? He said, are you crazy? Them's what rabbits eat, and I eat rabbits. So, carrots, onion, celery. Now, I know a lot of you is done saying. I can hear you, even the guy in the back row's got his hand raised up now. Shepherd pie don't usually have celery in it. I know it might not for y'all, but it do for me, because traditionally it had them little bitty green peas in there. What did I tell you like a long time ago with the Mexican rice? I don't like green peas, so they ain't going in there. We got two tablespoons of like, I like to say it, mater paste. We do, we headed to the fire, but on the way by, we're gonna take a little something for this to drink with, and that is some beef broth. So, come on. You gotta make sure when you put that mater paste in there that you get it where there ain't no lumps in there. So that's why I like to leave that hole right in the middle to make sure it's good and smooth. Half a cup of beef broth. And if I look away, pardon me, because 
that flame is licking on my eyebrows again this week but you want to make sure we get that good red color and that tomato paste all blended well in here you're going to let this cook till you know that them vegetables have got good and tender which ain't going to take long because we grated them in there if you're doing this in the house i'd do it over medium heat it's going to take about maybe four to five minutes at the most we're going to use about one tablespoon of the worcestershire sauce that's hot did y'all see that that's real hot 14 hands hot to trot so we're going to use about two that's about three because i took one and we want to at this point make sure that we cook that wine plumb down get that worcestershire incorporated really well when we see that everything is cooked out of there there's no more liquid left anything We'll set this aside and work on the topping. Right here, two, not two, one tablespoon of garlic, a cup of frozen corn. That's as close as you're gonna see me get to some green peas. Need to cook it about two or three more one minutes now to let everything blend together well. Point. I like to check my seasoning level. Mm. Folks, that's going to be some fine dining, but I'm going to give it just a little more shot of that right there. You can see as this begins to stick a little to the edge of that cast iron pan, all the moisture is going out of this, and that's what we're after. I just don't know want a lot of liquid left, so we're going to set it right there. Well, that skillet's just sitting over there resting, and I know the big ain't going to get it because the stove is hot. He ain't going to get yeah, in there. Got vegetables in yes, there. he's not fond of vegetables. He's not. I took four russet potatoes, peeled them, cut them evenly so they get done about the same time, cooked them down till they're good and tender, drained all the water off them, and make sure you drain them rascals well. Two egg yolks, third of a cup of cream, some garlic powder, some Red River Ranch Original. If we only had a tater masher, Shan, Due to the magic of TV in last week's episode, we still got one. Ain't that a handy dandy tool, folks, right there? It is for sure. To that, what I think makes this dish oh so good, some Parmesan cheese. Now, if you got one of them fresh blocks and you can grate her in there, that's fine. So we're going to put about that much in there, which is the right amount. Now, there is a test for this. Now, if you got it to this point and they're too runny as it begins to rain pretty good, folks, we don't want to get no water in them, add you a little cornstarch to it, maybe, a little flour. We just got to stiffen them back up to where they serve, stay on the spoon. You seen them at Dairy Queen when they make them blizzards and they turn them upside down? There we go. That's what I'm after. So if you're, if you're going to do this in the house, folks, just keep it in this 10-inch skillet. I can't do it that way today. I'm going to do it in a Dutch oven, so in it goes. Now let's get her good and level because that's what it's going to take here. So we'll smooth them out here in just a minute and see. We got her there. It's just like leveling concrete again, folks. Make sure that we have got her sealed up good. So I like to take that fork and see if it'll stick there and maybe pull up and give it some little whippy crowns like this here. That way... It's gonna look oh so pretty. You got a hole right there on the one side. There you go. We got to have a little more Parmesan on top because I like things Parmesan-y. So I got the lid on her, I do, and I am fixing to bake it like I always do in a Dutch oven. But if you got it in that skillet, like I was telling you, in the house, 400 degrees, slip her in there, you preheated that oven, about 20 minutes. I'm gonna show you what you're gonna look for, but we want them to potatoes to brown up nice and pretty with that cheese. So. Let's get to it, I'm getting wet. Well, you seen me, I told you we was gonna load it a little light on the bottom, but hey, it is raining and the ground is a little wet, so I'm going heavy to adjust it, I will like that. So remember, if you're cooking this perfectly pretty day, go sort of light on a trivet around the outside edge, you'll be just fine, because we want it to cook through just a little, but it ain't got to sit there and boil, it don't. So heavy on top, we need that heavy because we want them potatoes to brown. We will check it frequently because we're pretty close to that lid. And what have I told you folks that's been watching for a long time? You get something that close to a lid in a Dutch oven, you can burn it. Yes, you can. 
So one thing we got to do, folks, as we've taught you in this Dutch oven cooking, check that heat, make sure it's still hot. Can you hold it there more than five seconds? I cannot. So make sure you are that. And let's rotate to even out some of this heat. Bottom one way, lid the other. And when you got a lot of coals on a lid and you see them pretty close all the way around there, before you go to thinking you're gonna check something, just give it a little one of these to make sure that nothing's gonna fall in there when you pull it off. Ooh, it's beginning to brown up a little. Y'all smell it? It's gonna firm up. It's gonna turn a little golden brown there where you see that cheese that's on top. But that potato will make a crust. That's what that egg yolk does. It helps sort of bind that together. Makes it jump up there. Whew. Now you see me over arranging some of them coals on that lid all to one side. But you can target heat with cast iron. If one side's getting a little browner than the other, move the coals over. Or if something is not brown and at all in the middle, Get rid of the outside edges and just put you some coals right in the middle of that lid. You'll get yourself fixed up, you will. That's hot, folks. It burned in my finger, it did. And it left me some of that good stuff right down there in the bottom. Can you like Charleston? Who? Charleston. I don't know Charleston. You <laughs> know what I mean? But that was a happy dance, huh? Yes, but I do know one thing. This here is some mighty fine eating, and that's what I'm after. Mm. Automatically, the first thing that hits them taste buds is that Parmesan. The carrot and the onion, whew, it, it's, it's not any of it overpowering. It's just a great flavors that are all married together in this deal. This is just comfort food at its best, and I'm fixing to be comfortable. So, let's rewind this deal just a little. These are my top tips, folks, for getting this here done. Make sure that when you're browning that meat, whether you're using lamb or beef, make sure it's good and lean, first of all, but make sure you cook it down, cook that grease out of it. If you don't cook it all out of there, drain it out. That mincing of them vegetables is very important because it's gonna help it bind together oh so well. And remember to look for that spongy, crusty top on that topping thank y'all so much for watching it is such a pleasure to have you and we want to thank all our veterans our service men and women all those who have served to keep that old flag flying high above there in camp but also i got another special thank you i want to shout out and that's to all of you because what happened over the weekend here 400,000 subscribers if it was and we did a happy dance Woo! i mean we was happy dancing in the living room if y'all got a Twitter account or an Instagram account, I want you to shoot me a 10 second video of your best happy dance ever. When you get all this done, post it there, use the hashtag cowboy happy dance. And folks, I wanna see them because we're gonna do this over the next two or three weeks maybe, because what have I told you? Food and family brings the world together and makes you wanna do the happy dance. So remember folks, like, subscribe, and share these videos. We are at 400,000, but I need to go ahead and get to 500,000 this week if y'all make that happen for me. I'd appreciate it. God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the Shepherd Pie Trail. It is fine dining.
What are you doing, Beak? Hey, it's about time to go to work. You're not gonna work today? Just because it's raining, huh? Pretty tired, I see, so not gonna happen, huh? Biggie. What a good face. Come on, you coming to work? Good boy. That a boy. This is the bone pile. Is this it, Big? Well, gotta take a break. <laughs>